predicates. There's a word you don't hear too often when you're talking about SQL, but of course we're really just talking about the WHERE clause. You might think you know them, but there's some special dealings to handle when you come to analytics and WHERE clauses. Enjoy the video! In this session, we're going to talk about the ability to use analytic expressions as predicates. Now let's do a quick 10 second recap. In the last video, we introduced two new tables, the planets table, which contains the planets, and the moons for the planets, and every planet has zero or more moons. This was the question we had from the previous video, and this is the answer we had to introduce the data. In this lesson, we're looking at a new requirement. The net new requirement is, give me the three largest moons across the planets of Earth, Mars, and Saturn. Now, before we tackle that, the moment we start talking about analytics as predicates, we have this potential ambiguity. Let's have a look at the three planets for this new requirement. We have Earth, Mars, Saturn. The kind of expression we're expecting to write to satisfy this requirement is something like this. Restrict the planets to Earth, Mars, and Saturn. And using our familiar row number analytic, restrict those that are ranked effectively less than the top three. Now the question is, which would we apply first? Should we restrict ourselves to just these three planets first and then apply the row number? Or is this query really saying, go and get the top three rated moons and then see which planets they're in? Because if we were to do it that way, then in reality, Jupiter would be the dominant one. He's got three biggest moons across the whole solar system. We'd actually get no rows at all once we restricted it back to Earth, Mars and Saturn. So there's an ambiguity as to which we should do when we have an analytic and a predicate. This is actually easily solved We've applied some rules when it comes to using analytics as predicates. Number one, the WHERE clause predicate are always applied first. So in our case, the planet's names Mars, Saturn and Earth could always be applied first. And to make it even more clear, analytic functions are then applied afterwards. In that sense, when we say applied, it means they cannot be a predicate. So that expression we saw before is actually illegal. We can actually try that with a simple test in SQL Plus. If we try to a query where we've actually got an analytic function as a predicate, we'll get an error, and the error is quite explicit. So how do we solve it? We solve it using inline views, and these you'll become very familiar with if you're using analytic functions. Here is our initial query, which goes and gets the size rank of the radius, but only restricts the planets in the WHERE clause. It doesn't apply an analytic function in the WHERE clause. So we're restricting ourselves just to Earth, Mars, and Saturn now. Now that we have that size ranked worked out as an expression, we can reference that from our inline view. We, we refer to it from the outside view, and there's our result. So you can see the inline view actually adds clarity. We calculate the analytic first, and then we reference it as a predicate in the surrounding view. Let's wrap up. As we've now discovered, an analytic expression cannot be a predicate. We have to evaluate the analytic expression first, put it inside an inline view, and then you can refer to that value of the expression with the surrounding view. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll finally get onto the one of the new elements of analytic syntax, the partition clause. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.